Hi guys, this is Kathy on my YouTube channel, Kathy's World. Welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you're here today. Hope you're having a great, great day wherever you are. Well, today we're going to talk about books. We're going to talk about my five book reading wrap up for September. I only have one physical book to show you. I read two physical and I think three audible. The other physical book was a library book, so I've taken that back and it was late, but I didn't get in trouble. <laughs> I don't know what they do anymore. I don't think they fine you anymore, but you just see in print late. So <laughs> didn't realize time just slips away. But we're gonna start with book number one, which I totally enjoyed. It's called Daisy Darker and I gave it 4.5 stars. It's by Alice Feeney, suspense, mystery, fiction, thriller. Goodreads gave it 4.03 stars out of five and I gave it 4.5. I like the, the cover and the cover you have, this is water. Up here is a house with one single light on it, and it looks kind of dark. Here's the overview. After years of avoiding each other, Daisy Darker's entire family is assembling for Nana's 80th birthday party in Nana's crumbling gothic house on a tiny tidal island. Finally back together one last time when the tide comes in, they will be cut off from the rest of the world for eight hours. The family arrives, each of them harboring secrets. Then, at the stroke of midnight, as a storm rages, Nana is found dead, and an hour later, the next family member follows. Yikes. Trapped on an island where someone is killing them one by one, the Darkers must reckon with their present mystery, as well as their past secrets, before the tide comes in and all is revealed. With a wicked wink to Agatha Christie, and then there were none, Daisy Darker's unforgettable twists will leave readers reeling. Here's a quote I liked. If you can't navigate your way back to happy, navigate to the place you knew as less sad. I like that. You know what drew me to this book? Nana. I'm a Nana, but this Nana dies. So they came together for her 80th birthday. A psychic had warned Nana that she was going to die on her 80th birthday or somewhere soon thereafter, and lo and behold. So she's found dead on her birthday. And then more deaths follow. This is a family drama where you slowly get to know the characters and you begin to know their secrets. So more and more family members are being found dead. The living family members are terrified as to what's going to happen and the tension just rises. The big question is why is this happening and who the heck is behind it? Good story, it kept my interest the whole time. I did find a book trailer, it's on my blog, so you'll see the link to my blog in the description box. You can go there and watch the trailer if you want to. I couldn't find anything on a movie. I think it would make a good movie. The Five Star Review. With an overarching sense of doom and danger lurking at every turn, Feeney has created something both entirely creepy and completely riveting. I couldn't put it down. A thrilling locked room mystery. The One Star Review. Truly awful. I could see the plot twist from the start, and if I had known it was going to end the way it does, I wouldn't have even started the book. I am so disappointed as I have enjoyed other books by this author, but this just didn't cut it. And I agreed more with the five star review, so I totally disagree with the one star. It was a pretty good read. The next one for me was an audible read, and it's called The Secret Garden by Frances Burnett. I listened to it on Audible. It's classic, fantasy, magic, 4.8 stars on Audible out of 5, and I gave it 5 out of 5. I, I thought it was so endearing. Here's the overview. Mary Lennox starts her life as an unhappy victim of circumstance. After the loss of her parents, she moves to rural Yorkshire to live with a distant uncle where she resents the wilderness of the countryside. At first, she struggles to find a place with this new existence. Although unsure about her surroundings and its occupants, through the gentle guidance of the maid, she gradually becomes interested in the story of Mrs. Craven, who apparently used to spend her time in the garden at the house, the key to which has vanished. Mary makes it her quest to find and explore the possibilities it holds. Her journey sees her change, befriending a host of lovable characters as the garden begins to cast its spell on her and others, really. I don't have a favorite quote. I found this book to be an absolute joy. Young girl comes from India to an English manor house. She's angry, she doesn't wanna be there. But then she starts to meet people. Her perspective starts to change, but it completely changes when she discovers the garden. It changes everyone, this garden. It's a delightful, delightful story. I thoroughly enjoyed it. This book was written in 1911, so there's no book trailer. But there is a movie, and it's a 1993 movie, and that was the best, I think there's several movies, but based on the trailer, this looks like the best one. So I'm gonna watch it on Amazon. I have not watched it yet. The Five Star Review. 
an endearing, heartwarming story, creating a palpable, nature-laden reality, edifying the magical powers of nature and gratefulness for being alive. It professes the power of living and embracing the beauty around us. I love that. That described it very well. The One Star Review. I tried. I listened to three hours on Audible. I just couldn't take one more minute of Mrs. Mary being contrary. I understand what she's saying, but the book's great. Five stars. Book three, this is also an Audible read. It's called Crime and Carpet Bags by Julie Berry. It was an Audible listen, fantasy, middle grade, historical fiction, 4.08 stars on Goodreads out of five, and I gave it three per five. Now that Maeve Merritt has surrendered Marimos, the genie, she found in a sardine can, she expects her life will be as dull as dirt. Marimos, however, has other plans. Maeve's friend Tommy, the former orphan who has been adopted by Marimos's newest owner. When Tommy's father tries to use one of his wishes, he and Marimos go missing, and without a guardian, Tommy will be forced back to the orphanage. Maeve, Tommy, and their best friend Alice embark on an adventure full of magic and danger to rescue Tommy's father and the genie they've grown to love. I didn't pick up that they loved him. <laughs> I missed that part. I don't have a favorite quote. This is the second book in the series. I like the first one better. I enjoyed this one, but I like the first one a little bit more. And it's called Wishes and Wellingtons. That went a little quicker for me. This was a little slower. I gave the first one four stars. I gave this one three stars. I couldn't find a book trailer and I could not find anything on a movie. The five star review. Lovable characters you can't help but want to know better in a classic mystery style hunt involving good and selfish villains. A worthy sequel to the first book in the series, Magic and Hijinks Abound. And then the one-star review. There were no one-star reviews. There were no two-star reviews. Everybody liked this book. All the reviews were three stars and above. Everyone liked it, and I did too. That's how I felt about that. Book four, The Grand Hotel. This was also an audible read. Horror, fantasy, fiction, paranormal. Goodreads gave it 3.57 stars, and I gave it 3.5. Welcome to the hotel where nobody can check out. When a desk clerk welcomes a group of tourists into his mysterious and crumbling hotel, the last thing he ever expected was that one girl on the tour might hold the power to unravel the hidden mystery that lines its walls. The Grand Hotel is a horror novel by esteemed author Scott Kenimore and takes the reader on a thrilling ride that interconnects a series of stories narrated by the desk clerk of the Grand Hotel. While it is not known whether or not the desk clerk is actually the devil reincarnated, it is strange that many of the people who came for a tour of the hotel never leave. As the narrator takes you deeper and deeper into the heart of the hotel, he starts wondering if all the secrets that have been hiding for so long may soon start to show themselves. While he is quite ready for this experience, the real question is, is the rest of the world. I don't have a favorite quote. It is a story about someone taking a group of folks on a tour of the hotel. I, I picture this grand, beautiful hotel, and I think it's in present day, but a lot of the stories don't seem to be. For me, it was just a series of short stories. So he would lead all the people to a room, the person in the room would share their story, whether it be a good story or a bad story. All in all, it was a collection of spooky short stories. It was pretty good. Some stories I liked, some not so much. It was worth the read. I did find some movies that were called The Grand Hotel but had nothing to do with this book that I could tell. I couldn't find a book trailer either. The Five Star Review. Right up my alley for what I was in the mood for, apparently. Like a collection of Twilight Zone and Night Gallery episodes with a fun framework and legitimately excellent voice acting. I did like the voice. Pulpy, fun, morbid, and sometimes surprising. Thoroughly enjoyable. The One Star Review, boring. This was a long book and I literally kept asking myself what the point of all the stories were. Nothing made sense until the last two minutes of the book. Not worth the read. Not sure how this book got so many good reviews. I lean more toward the five star. The last book that I read, book five. Saint Maisie by Jamie Attenberg. Historical fiction, fiction, New York. 3.65 out of five stars on Goodreads and I gave it three out of five but I also DNF'd it. But I had to give it a good score because it's an okay book, I just, I just got bored. The cover is really pretty. It says St. Maisie on the top, it's pretty colorful. And then in the background behind St. Maisie, there's a picture of her and some people who appear kind of down in their luck surrounding her ticket booth she's working in. You can also see the skyline of New York. 
Meet Maisie Phillips, big-hearted and bawdy. She's the truth-telling proprietress of the Venice, the famed New York City movie theater. It's a jazz age with romance and booze aplenty, even when prohibition kicks in. And Maisie never turns down a night on the town, but her high spirits mask a childhood rooted in poverty, and her diary, always close at hand, holds her dearest secrets. When the Great Depression hits, Maisie's life is on the brink of transformation. Addicts and bums roam the Bowery. Homelessness is rampant. If Maisie won't help them, then who will? When she opens the doors of the Venice to those in need, this ticket-taking, fun-time girl becomes the beating heart of the Lower East Side, and in defining one neighborhood, helps define the city. I don't have a favorite quote. It was good. I like I liked to hear the story of Maisie. I like to hear her background and her family. I like to hear about the history of New York. I found that really interesting. But it just seemed to go on and on. And I just couldn't take it anymore. I didn't look forward to reading it at night, so I DNF'd it. I was probably about halfway through. There are some kind of hot and heavy sex scenes in it, but they're short, so you, you'll probably survive. <laughs> I couldn't find anything on a book trailer or a movie. The five-star review is really long. I'm just going to read a portion of it. This book was absolutely beautiful. Maisie Phillips Gordon is a little spitfire. She's tough, spunky, feisty, loving, sentimental, and most of all, generous. Maisie is a good person, but with some bad habits here and there. She is human after all. Humanity is alive and well. Enjoy. The one star. This library book renewed once just didn't grab me and make me look forward to opening it at the end of the day. That was kind of true for me. It was easy to say no more and put it into the return slot. That's kind of how I felt. But I'm going to mark it in the middle because I think I liked Maisie and I liked her story, but I got a little bit bored with it at times too. And that's why I DNF'd it and I gave it three stars. All right, guys, that is it for my five book reading wrap up for September. I'd love to know what you're reading. Put it in the description box for me. If you've read any of these books, I'd love to know how you feel about it. All right, you guys take care. Happy reading and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.